Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Super Legend Cub takes first place in Texas STOL Roundup. Richard Collins celebrates 70 years of writing about airplanes. FAI holds second annual wingsuit competition. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's November 3rd, and this is Airborne Unlimited. American Legend Aircraft Company is boasting about customer-flown Super Legends that took first place and scored best overall in the recent Texas STOL Roundup. With two Super Legend aircraft participating, their pilots took first and second place, respectively in obstacle and traditional STOL competitions. The 2017 Texas STOL Roundup was held at South Texas Regional Airport in Hondo. A newly completed Super Legend XP piloted by its owner Joe Edwards aced the obstacle competition taking first place by significant margin. Participating in the LSA experimental class, Edward used 158.1 feet for takeoff and 530.7 feet in landing over an obstacle of 25-foot inflatable pylons. A second Super Legend HP piloted by Scott Warren of Warren Aircraft finished a close second in the traditional heat involving a straight-in, low-and-slow approach to landing beyond a line and dissipating energy as quickly as possible. The Super Legend XP is a performance-enhanced version of the Legend Cub. It features include square wingtips, extended flaps and ailerons, 40 gallons usable fuel tanks, an extended forward landing gear, Acme Aero shocks, and enhanced baggage areas. After the break, advanced tickets now available online for EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. For those who like to plan ahead, advanced purchase submission tickets and camping credentials are now available for the 66th annual EAA AirVenture Oshkosh Fly-In. The week-long event will be held July 23rd through 29th of 2018 EAA members and general public can now purchase tickets via a secure website and speed through the admission process upon arrival in Oshkosh. Discounts of $2 on daily adult admissions and $5 on weekly adult admissions are available by purchasing prior to June 15, 2018. A three-member arbitration panel has ruled on the pay, 401k retirement benefit, and job security provisions, a joint contract for pilots flying Alaska Airlines and Virgin America. The joint collective bargaining agreement, which will bring the two pilot groups together under one contract, is effective immediately and is amendable April 1, 2020. The F.A. 18 Hornet fighter has served as one of the Navy's most formidable weapons for over 25 years. The legacy airframes were built with an intended service life of 6,000 flight hours. Since the vast majority of legacy Hornets have exceeded their initial service lives and to keep the aircraft mission ready, the Service Life Assessment Program was developed 15 years ago by the F.A. 18 and E.A. 18G Program Office in Patuxent, Maryland. The FAA has named new regional administrators in four regions of the country, Southwest, Southern, Eastern, and Northwest Mountain. Regional administrators represent the administrator and the agency outside Washington and stay aware of pertinent issues in their regions. Terry Bejo has been named the new Southwest Regional Administrator. Michael O'Hara is the new Southern Regional Administrator. Jennifer Solomon has been named the new Eastern Regional Administrator and David Suwami will become the new Northwest Mountain Regional Administrator. 
Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. An icon of aviation journalism is celebrating a milestone. The first article that Richard Collins wrote about an airplane appeared in the November 1947 issue of Airfax. It is a pilot report about flying an air coupe out of Glens Falls, New York, accompanied by his father and Airfax founder, Leighton Collins. The first issue of Reader's Digest Size Airfax was published in February 1938. Although its circulation never exceeded 20,000 subscribers, Airfax was the magazine's starting point for such authors as Richard Bach, Wolfgang Languish, Bob Buck, and Bill Malden. Airfax was relaunched online, sponsored by Sporties, in 2011. The Aircoop pilot report, written by 13-year-old Richard Collins, is posted at airfaxjournal.com, along with comments by Richard. He says that he doesn't remember if he was proud of the story when it first ran, but knows for sure that all his life he has had both printer's ink and avgas flowing through his veins. Richard has now written 1,500 magazine articles, 13 books, as well as an extensive library of videos. He says, I will just say that it has been a wonderful challenge, a whole lot of fun, and I managed to make a decent living along the way. I always felt like I had the best job in the world. After these messages, FAI holds second annual wingsuit competition. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. The top wingsuit flyers from around the globe have gathered at Skydive Ferocity in Overtown, Nevada to compete in the second FAI World Cup of wingsuit flying. This week, 50 to 70 athletes from over 10 countries and five continents will test their mental and physical strength against each other in two disciplines, performance flying and acrobatic flying. The second FAI World Cup of wingsuit flying consists of two separate events, the acrobatic event and performance events. The acrobatic competition event consists of teams of three people, two acrobatic performers, and one camera operator capturing the performance on video. The team will exit the aircraft at 12,500 feet above the ground if the performers have a working time of 65 seconds to demonstrate to the judges their ability and acrobatic skills, consisting of flyovers, flips, turns, and relative flight. The artistic event has seven rounds and is judged for accuracy of performance, artistic performance, completion of formations, grips, and quality of the camera work. The camera operator and the image the competitor camera person delivers is part of the acrobatic performance. The competition runs through November 9th. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airport Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.